You can describe my day as hot or wonderful. I will try to prove the second one. With the arrival of summer, I find myself rising with the sun at 5 a.m., greeted by the eager anticipation of my beloved hands. And the moment I open the cooktop, they burst out like a whirlwind, spreading their wings, soaring through the sky and engaging in their playful games of chase. It's an absolute delight to witness Zero's magnificent creature in the element. How could anyone resist falling head over heels for their charm? <coughs> Next, my attention turns to the quail. It's time to replenish their food and water. My animals ignite a sense of responsibility within me and teach me something even more profound the importance of unconditional love and care with the initial task complete i retreat to a cozy nook friendliness steaming a cup of tea in my hands it's a time to gather my thoughts and plan the day ahead during this precious time i dedicate it solely to myself and my dreams Relishing in the tranquility before my daughter stirs from her slumber. After I nourish my daughter with a breakfast, I typically head out to the garden for an hour-long session of walk before the scorching heat takes over. You see, once 9 am rolls around, it's nearly impossible to withstand the sweltering temperature out there. My first task upon stepping into the garden is to hunt for fresh grass, a vital source of nutrients for my beloved hands. I want to ensure they receive the perfect balance of vitamins without having to compete amongst themselves. Just look at how excited they get when they see me approaching with their favorite treat. I hold out the treat and in an instant they dive in, packing away with their tiny beaks. Watching them enjoy their treat brings me immense happiness. It's a rewarding feeling to know that I can provide them with nourishment and see their contentment firsthand. One of the daily tasks that come with my job is weeding and shoveling the grass. It's a never-ending battle and it seems like as soon as you clear the grass in one area, it starts growing in another. It's just one of those things that come with the territory. But there is a string of satisfaction that come with the process. In those moments of quiet solitude, surrounded by the sound of chirping birds and the earth beneath my fingers, I find a sense of peace. It's a chance to reflect, to connect with the land and to appreciate the simple beauty of nature's cycles.
Next time, make sure to set aside some time in my day to have a delicious bounty of gooseberries and cherries. With the basket in hand, I begin the process of gathering the harvest. You know there is something incredibly satisfying about plucking ripe, juicy fruits straight from the branches. After harvesting the juicy gooseberries and cherries, I have an exciting plan for those delightful fruits. I'll be turning them into a refreshing and delicious cooling drink that's perfect for quenching our thirst during the hot summer days. While I was attempting to reach for the ripe cherries on the tree in my yard, a friendly neighbor happened to notice my struggle. With the help of kind neighbor and the study letter he provided, picking the ripe cherries from the tree became a breezer. With a bowl of freshly picked cherries in my hands, I embarked on the task of removing their pits. And seem to share my fondness for those delicate fruits, making it essential to give them a thorough wash before processing. It didn't matter that the cherries didn't look picture perfect or that the process was not the most glamorous. What mattered was the act of preparing those fruits with care and intention, knowing that they would soon become part of my culinary creations. Whether it was a sweet cherry pie, a refreshing cherry smoothie, or a delicateable cherry compote. As the scorching sun beats down on the world outside, I retreat in door to walk and tend to my daughter's needs and also find respite from the oppressive heat. After 6 pm the temperature begins to relent and we venture back outside, ready to resume our unfinished tasks. One of the first order of business is tending to the needs of our beloved hands. The hen house requires a fresh layer of hay bedding ensuring their comfort. With a raking hen, I begin the task of removing the old hay from the hen house. By the way, I'm going to need that to use hay. Homestead is the kind of place where you can find a use for anything. There every source hold to man's value and purpose.
The texture of the hay beneath my fingers is rough yet inviting, a reminder of the connection we share with the natural world. Lost in the rhythm of my walk, I had forgotten to close the door to the hen house. Spreading the hay on the floor, I turned around to find the comical sight. My hands had seized the opportunity and made the quick escape into the garden. My daughter and I embarked on a mission to coral the adventurous hens, but it quickly became evident that they were thoroughly enjoying their newfound freedom in the uncharted territory of the garden. The curious nature had led them astray and coaxing them back to the safety of the hen house proved to be quite the challenge. Then I resumed my tasks knowing that the spirit of adventure would always be intertwined with the daily rhythm of our home. Every single day in the homestead is filled with surprised and unexpected twists. And that's partially why I so value in utilizing the used hay. I made the decision to repurpose it by filling the ditch that served as a conduit for watering my beloved tomato plants. It dawned on me that this act would serve two important purposes – as a natural fertilizer and as a natural barrier against the rapid evaporation of moisture. Take the empty wheelbarrow back to the side and don't waste any time. The pea season have come to an end, and while some might consider the drying peas as part of their prime, I see them as a valuable source of protein for my chickens. Every day I tear up some pea bushes and spoil my favorites. With eager anticipation, I swiftly turned on the water, eager to witness the fruits of my labor and see if my idea would work. And just as I had hoped, everything fell into place perfectly. The tomatoes were water red, the hay dutifully guarded the precious water from evaporation, and I turned my attention to the most enjoyable task of all harvesting the fruits of my labor. Armed with a basket in hand, I ventured through the garden. During my university years, since I delved into a world of agriculture and studied the conventional practices used in commercial vegetable production, a seed was planted in my mind. I became determined to embrace a different approach, one that prioritized fresh, pesticide-free vegetables. Little did I know that this desire would eventually blossom into a beautiful reality, where I now proudly harvest my own bountiful crops free from harmful chemicals. I 
must admit I faced my fair share of failure along the way. But my determination to succeed was unwavering, and this made all the difference. Can you believe that snails feasted on half of my cucumber seedlings? It was disheartening to say at least. And let's not even talk about the first sowing of carrots that stubbornly refused to sprout. As for those potatoes, well, I mistakenly plant them in the shade, resulting in a disappointing harvest of small spots. The peach leaves in my beloved garden fell victim to an army of mysterious insects, and they could go on and on with my list of failures. Despite the setbacks, I never lost sight of my ultimate goal – to harvest a bountiful yield of completely natural and incredibly tasty vegetables. Every day, as I gather the fruits of my labor, a deep sense of fulfillment washed over me. It's a reward that makes all the effort worthwhile. The greatest reward, however, lies in the joy and peace of mind I experience when I share those homegrown treasures with my daughter. Knowing that she is nourishing her body with wholesome pesticides free produce fills me with an immeasurable sense of satisfaction. I take pride in instilling in her a love for nature, a respect for the earth, and an understanding of the importance of sustainable living. Taking care of my beloved quills is an essential part of my daily routine. One of the ways I do this is by providing them a special treat that they absolutely adore – sand bass. Every so often, I take a container filled with fine sand and place it in their coop. As soon as the quill catch sight of it, they can hardly contain the excitement. They eagerly hop into the container, scattering the sand around as they vigorously roll and flutter. My daughter's affection for the quill is truly heartwarming. As I visit myself peeling vegetables, my little princess couldn't bear to be separated from her favorite quill. So we decided to bring it along with us. It reminded me of the incredible power of innocence and the ability of children to find joy in the simplest of things. This morning my neighbor shared some unfortunate news about his tomato crop. The feet of Toro fungus has caused significant damage to his precious plants. After consulting with my mother, I found an organic remedy to protect my plants. A concoction composed of water, milk whey, and a dash of iodine. I wasted no time misting the concoction onto the leaves, ensuring each plant received its fair share of protection. Time will tell if my natural remedy proves effective in watering off the dreaded fungus. In the midst of tending to my tomato plants, I realized that it was also time to activate the drip irrigation system for the rest of my plants. With the scorching heat bearing down upon us, it was crucial to provide them with the much-needed hydration they craved. As I continued tilling the plants, my gaze fell upon a magnificent apple tree. 
its branches burned it with an abundance of apples. But alas, the weight of the fruit proved too much for one branch to bear, and it had gracefully surrendered, making contact with the fertile ground below. With a gentle touch, I plucked the abundant apples from the branches. As I gathered the fallen apples that lay scattered on the ground, I couldn't help but marvel at their untouched beauty. Nature's generosity had provided an unexpected bounty, and I knew that it shouldn't go to waste. With a smile on my face, I gathered the fallen treasures and made my way to the chicken coop. The hands with the curious nature approached the apples with cautions intrigue. They peered at the unfamiliar fruit, tilting their head and examining it with eyes. But as they discovered the sweet juiciness hidden beneath the crisp skin, their hesitation quickly turned into enthusiasm. As they stood there watching the hands happily pecking away at the apples, a wave of tranquility washed over me. I realized that amidst the daily toil and the endless tasks, it's those quiet moments of connection with the world that truly nourish the soil. The harmony between my efforts and the bounties of the earth reminded me of the intricate dance of life itself, where we give and receive in equal measure.